So indulge me for a moment. Uh, reach out to the person next to you and shake their hand. This is going to be the human moment. <laughs> Wonderful. You know, I'm a technologist, and there's no doubt that this world that we're living in is driven by technology in itself. But what I'm concerned about is the future of hospitality and what it can look like, what it will look like, and how we can rise together. There are three messages I would like you to be concerned about, or pose, if you will. Does the future of work mean in this whole industry that we are just a dot? Does it matter? Number two is, can we live in an industry that is called hospitality without connectivity, without being connected, without that human moment that you all felt? And third is, could we ever imagine a world without hospitality? When you think of hospitality, what does that world look like for you? You know, we live in a hyper-connected world. You've heard that throughout the evening. In fact, we are addicted to our phones. We're addicted to connectivity. It's 24 by 7, and we can't even live without that phone. In fact, it is an extension of our body. In fact, there are people who say, I'd love to think beyond 240 characters. I'd love to pose a question beyond 240 characters. And by the way, Google does not equal research. It's being able to pose those questions. And I have been in restaurants where you have mom and dad with your iPhones, and you have the children with your iPads. And that is their conversation. In fact, it is called a conversation. And we have to think, is that what is happening to us? I'm going to take you on that journey when we're talking about the future of the hospitality industry. It's personal to me. 48 hours ago, I was in Beirut, Lebanon. And before that, I was in Athens. And before that, I was in Prague. I wish I, wish I could teleport. But I can tell you, hospitality is extremely important. So we are connected, we are addicted, and, you know, there are restaurants now in San Francisco which are asking you to leave your phones at the concierge desk so that you can have a conversation. This is really, really very, very key. But we have become addicted. I have talked and spoken with refugees who basically said, I need my phone, that's all I need. They managed through all of their journey to get to where they needed to get to with that phone. It becomes, as I said before, your tool. It's an extension of who you are. But are we, are we addicted? I know I have to ask that question of all of you, because I am a technologist, and I know exactly what technology is doing, and I know exactly how it can affect you and impact you. And think about this, scrolling and scrolling, and doing this, and doing this, and doing this, and constantly doing that. So when I take you on this journey about where we're going in hospitality, for the hospitality students and the people who mean hospitality, I want you to think about where this industry is going. Oh, yes. How many of you have attended conferences where it is just that? I have a robot, the robot greets me, and it's hospitality inside. It's hospitality inside. And there is no human. Or maybe there is a human. Maybe it's just like, as Long has stated, there is something that says, I am working. We are working. Instead of X inside, it becomes hospitality inside. And then, and then, and then. But there's the robot hotel. Interesting. There's no human, except for the person checking in. There's nobody saying, good evening, welcome, welcome back. Maybe there is somebody or some entity saying, check in, pay, room 142, that's all. 
Now, as a technologist, I'm fascinated by that particular world, because think about what happens when you hack it. Think about that. When we've already proven that we can hack thermostats in hotels, so this becomes a concern. This becomes a concern if the future, and it's not even the future, ladies and gentlemen, it's today. That exists today. But you know, we can refine ourselves basically and say, I've got my own concierge, my floor concierge, who knows me, and it's just working. But I remember being in hotels where I had concierges. And I would push the button, the wrong button, and three or four humans would come knocking on my door. But no, we're refining this. We're refining it to maybe transforming the industry. And I hope you see a pattern in this of really not being human anymore. Or could we change it? Could we, ladies and gentlemen, change that? Oh. What about food? What about food manufacturing? What about bringing you your food? What about hacking that? Can you imagine what it would look like? That you could no longer have a human greeting you, taking your order, and actually placing your plate or your dinner to your satisfaction. We have become or becoming no longer human. Or are we? And this is provoking me to think about this world more and more because, as a technologist, I am also an ethicist. I care deeply about ethics in what we do. I care deeply about the impact of this technology to our industry and to the hospitality industry, which I will tell you is very personal to me. But then we take something that was cool. It's really, really cool. I can actually create a robot to give you a drink. We've seen that before. We've seen that before. And by the way, when you had your drink, who served you tonight? Who served you that drink? But we refined it, ladies and gentlemen, to now a robot bar. So we went from something that has been a fad to something that has now. Becoming more optimal. I serve you. You want a scotch? Scotch, scotch, scotch. Here you go. Wine, wine, wine. Pay, pay. pay. And where do you have your socialization? Where do you have the right to be human? And what value does that bring to you? Would you prefer to have a human serve you that scotch, or do you prefer to have these cool robots? Or maybe they're not cool. I'm still thinking in my hacking mentality what it would be like to hack that world. But you know, we are transforming ourselves into a different way, and you must be pausing and pausing and pausing as to where we're going with this. Where are we going with this story? If we are now becoming in this particular industry, very, very, very. Tech-oriented, very robotic, very artificial intelligence in a way that I have not seen it before. Not to say that it's dystopian; it, it can be. But we have to take a look and pause and put that push pause button on, and to think: Where are we going to be in this hospitality industry? Where is that technology going to take us? If we are now losing or starting to lose that sense of humanity, there was mom, <laughs> but mom was my my next actual picture here, and I'm going to say that my mother is very special to me because my mother was a person who was my best friend, and if you don't have your mothers beside you, if you don't know who they You know, not speak with them. Your mother, please make sure that you reach out to her and talk with her. My mother was in the hospitality industry for 30 years. In fact, 
This was the last picture before she passed away. She bemoaned the fact of what technology was doing to this industry. She hated it. She basically hated me being in this industry as, as a technologist. And this is what happens when you have no technology working for you, actually. We actually adapt and improvise, but thank you very much. We, what she would say to me was the fact that if we're not careful, we will lose the empathy that goes with hospitality. So a year before my mother passed away, she knew, by the way, she helped find, found the School of Hospitality and Management at San Jose State University in California. And basically, she absolutely knew that there was going to be an endowment in her name. She wanted the hospitality industry to live on without her, and particularly in hotel management. And the year before she passed away, knowing that there was going to be an endowment, she took a $100 bill out of her bra, and she gave it to me and said, okay, this is my first donation to my endowment. And I said, mom, it doesn't work that way. We don't need to take that money. But this is a person who really believed in this industry. And I can tell you, if you are not careful of where you're going with technology, if you are not careful with what this means, anybody can be automated, but certainly not the human. And so I leave you with this, ladies and gentlemen. The future is not the technology. The future is not the chatbot or the AI or that robotic butler that comes to you. The future is going to be human. Now that's a nice, really interesting thought and idea to leave you with. Thank you.